We're starting now uh, to look at painting the image that we set to a drawing moments ago. Again in the Victory Gardens on a summer day, strong shadows, strong colors in the trees. But we're going to start uh, by placing some uh, weaker washes, lighter washes, to get things started. Into the road, <clears throat> I'm placing a little bit of yellow ochre into the uh, Victory Gardens themselves. There's a lot of green, uh, perhaps an overwhelming amount of green, and in this case we're going to try and simplify some of the greens. Uh, in this case we're going to be adding blue to some of the green. In other cases we're going to be, like here, we're adding some strong yellow to the green. In other cases, some black or brown. All of this to modulate the green so that we don't have a single green taking over the scene, that we have a variety at the end, and that usually ends up with a more satisfying result. So this is a, a good thing to think about if you're going to be including a, in a, doing a painting that has a dominant hue of green, trying to find ways to, to vary that green. In addition to varying the color, we're of course going to vary the lightness and the darkness of the green. And right now we're finishing up the first application of the lighter tones. You can see bluer green, yellow green, a more pure green, a very gray green in the back, and some blue sky. Uh, behind all this are some buildings and some distant trees that are even grayer still. And now we're uh, getting ready to uh, include some some darker hues. Um, this scene was selected uh, to talk about the idea of selection. Uh, how do we choose an image when we're out in nature? What are the things that we should look for? Sometimes it's very obvious. Actually, that's pretty rare. I'll keep talking now. I'm, I'm applying a darker tone, but I'm going to keep talking about selection. Uh, other times, most of the time, what we have to do is find something that's interesting and um, form our painting so that we emphasize uh, the aspect that's really interesting us and um, at the same time perhaps minimize other areas around that painting so that we end up with sort of a focal center, uh, an epicenter, uh, a focal area that tells the story, that has a little more interest than other areas, and a strong focal point in your painting accomplishes a lot of things. It gives the eye a place to rest, it um, creates an attractive part of the painting, uh, it simplifies your job too because in other areas you can get by with um, l less detail, less uh, less work. I'll say work, but actually it's a, it's a good strategy. It's more than just avoiding work. You're actually making the painting more elegant and more like poetry. So uh, by this dark mass I'm surrounding, yes, there's definitely a lot of shadows and the, the trees are against the light so it's quite dark. At the same time we're creating a window, a visual window where we can place our center of interest, uh, this little turn in the path with a figure walking down the path is, is our center of interest in this case. So this dark, it's a pattern of darks that forms uh, the grouping of trees. These darks connect visually and they encircle a, a bright area. Now the, the shadows, which are equally dark, I varied the shadow and adding more blue, but the intensity of the dark is the same. This shadow color is surrounding the background, I'm sorry, surrounding uh, the path and connecting the lower parts of the trees to the foliage that's uh, coming up the path and uh, these, uh, this helps to isolate our center of interest, make it more impactful. The contrast definitely is an attraction point for our eyes. 
<clears throat> so there's intention behind all of this. It's not simply copying what's in front of me, but using what's in front of me with intent. And I, I very much enjoy telling a story or uh, creating a moment with painting. I'm not there just to describe the scene, but I want to include some something that I enjoy in the scene and, um, and emphasize that and make that a strong part of the painting. Here you can see the dark has been extended all the way to the right, and I'm using that dark to, to show off some of the, the fencing and some of the flower beds that we start to see on the right side. It's also connecting this dark element to the right side of the painting. So the dark element is winding its way and connecting to other dark parts of the painting. This creates a visual integrity. We're doing it not uh, as one big stroke, but we're, you know, like pieces of a puzzle, we're putting it together so that the darks, just like a jigsaw, they interlock and they form uh, a strong connection. Okay, so now we're adding a, a few more darks to our center of interest uh, and placing the figure. The figure is small but intensely dark. Here's the finished piece. You can see how the green varies, you can see how the darks unify the painting and give you a focal area of the figure walking through the Fenway Victory Gardens.